Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Rio here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, I just wanted to talk about the importance of looking after your members and doing activities that are social outside of normal meeting activities. And that does not mean like doing training events outside of meetings. Like you should do those and you should do those occasionally, but I'm talking about just generally being social with your members and making them feel like they are part of your CAP unit family. So let's talk about that. So something that I did recently, not on the squadron level, but for the group level, because I'm working on my master rating for cadet programs, you're supposed to just side note, when you're doing your master rating for cadet programs, you're required to do a group level or wing level activity. And so I ran a group level activity, but for a group level activity, I was like, you know, it'd be really fun if we did something where we were outside in the corn mazes at a farm. Sometimes you have those local to you and sometimes you may not, but whatever is local to you and whatever might interest your members, you could always consider doing for an activity. So in this video, we're gonna talk about coming up with ideas to do social activities, kind of the process that you can take with it, not required, but some suggestions. In addition to the steps that are required to put together the plans, getting approval for it, actually implementing it, and then steps to take afterwards to debrief and reflect on how the activity went. So the first step, coming up with ideas. It depends on who your target audience is for the activity, but typically, if you're a composite squadron, you'd want cadets and senior members to both attend, and potentially even family members if it's a social event. So something that you can do is you can ask your members for input and feedback on what their recommendations are. Like my unit in the past, we've asked the cadets, hey, what would you like to do for a social activity? And then we'd give them about two weeks to come up with a recommendation. And then they send us their official recommendation and we ask them to include a number of pieces of information that we need to make a good decision. That would include like the price for each participant, what the location would be, if there are any risks associated with that location or if like there's a waiver that has to be signed by members for them to participate in the activity, if there is just additional information about the general location that we should know, and maybe even contact information for the facility to get group rates. Those kind of pieces of information are very useful, especially when planning something out. Before you start really planning in depth, the unit commander and like the command team should really decide how much are we willing to have members pay in order to participate in this activity. Typically, the less it costs, like if it's free, then people are going to be a little bit more interested and willing than if they have to pay a lot of money because they already have to pay for uniform parts. They have to pay for like their ground team member 24 hour pack. There are a couple of things that people have to pay for in association with their membership as a CAP member. And so sometimes unit commanders are hesitant to have like hefty prices of like going to an amusement park, for an example. There are also like really high risk activities, like going to a trampoline park. That's a high adventure thing. And it sounds like someone will probably break something because those are pretty dangerous. And there's typically a waiver associated with those. So it's a balance between figuring out how much risk members are willing to take, how much they're willing to pay, and what is engaging for them to participate in. Like something that my squadron has done in the past is we've done laser tag. We've gone to the local laser tag place and we've done laser tag. Senior members and cadets both participated in it. Some senior members were like, I'm not interested. And some cadets were like, I don't have time for that. And that's okay, because at social activities, not everyone is required to participate, but it's always nice to be able to hang out in a social setting to be able to do things with other people. And so in between games, the cadets and senior members could just kind of hang out where all the arcade games were, and then they could mingle amongst themselves between each of the things. And with the group level activity that I did, it was actually like an evening event where it was kind of like there were different haunted mazes sort of things because those are interesting. And we split off into small groups and we went to the different activities when our tickets said we were required to do them. So as like a couple of ideas that I've seen squadrons do, like they've done picnics or barbecues. At this time of year, it's a little bit harder depending on where you live. If it's colder, people probably won't want to do that. <laughs> But another activity that I've run is like, I called it a cadet dinner and dance. And it was specifically more for the cadet side, 
but it was almost like a dining out. And if you're not familiar with what a dining out is, it's basically where everyone dresses up in their blues or in dresses and like their, their suits, I guess. And we hang out, we eat a nice dinner, and then we dance afterwards. And I hosted an activity like that when I was a cadet because I was like, you know, let's have a fun activity. Let's do this. And so we worked together with one of the local county facilities to kind of have a good group rate for prices for meals and use a very nice facility that had a very beautiful large atrium. Another activity that people might like is bowling. Bowling is not specific to what age, like children like bowling. Middle people like bowling. Older people like bowling. People just like bowling in general. So there's that, or even frisbee. Sometimes it's more physical things, or like mini golf. I've also seen mini golf as a thing. Normally it's like going out and being physical. Some people have thought of going to movie theaters and watching a movie as a group. So th those are some ideas for you. If you have any additional ideas or things that your unit has done that has really worked as like a social activity, please feel free to include it in the comments down below. So after you've decided your activity, there are a couple of things that you have to do as like a next step. So if you are not a unit commander, then as a unit member, you have to talk to your unit commander about doing the activity. If you're a cadet, then as a cadet, you would send it up your chain first to the cadet commander and maybe even CC the CDC just so they know you're planning an activity and propose it that way, or you could even verbally go over it with your CDC or the deputy commander for cadets, which is the adult responsible for the cadet program, talk to them about, hey, I have this idea, how would you like me to go about with the process? Sometimes they'll ask you to directly email it to them, sometimes they'll ask you to forward it up the chain. Whatever the case may be, be prepared to put it up through the approval process. So once it's gone up to the squadron level, depending on what level of the activity it is, it'll have to go up to the group, at least if it's a group level activity. And if it's going up to wing, it has to go up to wing and has to receive approval. Whenever you have a cap related activity, it's also going to have a cap activity number. And the different wings have different processes for obtaining activity numbers. So if you don't know how to obtain it, please talk to your unit commander and see what the process is for getting that activity number so that you've got it specific to what you are doing. And the next thing with planning an activity is having a cap F 160 S filled out, which is the real time risk management worksheet. And essentially what you do is you go through each of the risks that are associated with your activity and you rate them on how the initial risk level is your risk mitigation measures and what the final risk level is after that mitigation has been conducted. So for example, if you are doing an outdoor activity, then a risk might be that there is dehydration or getting sunburn. And so mitigating things that you would do is make sure people have a water bottle brought with them and that they have sunscreen. And if people don't have sunscreen, providing extra sunscreen so that they can wear it, just as an example. And so then that would be a low risk level after you've combined those mitigating factors with that initial risk level. And so you fill out that form with the different risks and with COVID, we've had to do additional steps of COVID precautions in that CAP form 160S. Something else that I do when I am proposing an activity is I have an official write-up on all the information regarding the activity. So the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, the how, and all the details in between. So once, once that activity has at least been initially brought up to the CDC, good information to present in that discussion would include who the activity is for. So if it's for the squadron, include that is for the squadron, any cost associated with it, the UOD or the uniform of the day. If it's wearing your ABU uniform, like you're doing an activity for an ES activity, then that would be appropriate. But if you're doing a social activity, then it would be like civilian attire appropriate for the weather or something like that. And then you might also want to include like a cap 60-80 that's filled out, which is the cap permission slip that's associated with activities for cadets to have their parents sign before they attend activities. You would also include the activity location 
a potential draft sign-up sheet. So if you have access to Google Forms or Microsoft Forms, having a draft form filled out so that the reviewing parties can review that survey before it's sent out, that like make sure that it has critical information in it, in addition to just general information for the attendees when they attend, like if there's a specific rally point where everyone's meeting before you drive out to the location or if everyone's driving themselves, all of those are important information pieces just so that everyone kind of understands what is going on when the, it, the activity is going through the approval process. Okay, so let's say that your activity has been approved, you're good to go, the squadron commander says that your squadron level activity is good and it's gotten an activity number and the chain above has been notified that you all will be doing that social activity and it's all good to go on that end. What do you do next? Well, there is sending out the information to your entire unit and making sure that the sign up form is really filled out with all the information that you need. Anytime that I have a form for people to sign up, I ask them to include their name, their email address, their phone number, emergency contact name, email address, and phone number. In addition to if, if it's outside of the squadron, making sure I know what unit they're coming from. And then also making sure that they understand the requirements for attending the activity, like if they have to buy a ticket, then making sure that ticket link is included in there. Or if there's like a waiver associated with it, like laser tag, there is typically a waiver that waives liability of the, the laser tag location. So making sure they understand that those are parts of the requirements to participate in the activity and that they accept that. And filling out and like submitting those forms is kind of that next step because you want to make sure you know who is attending before the activity. Just showing up day of and only having two people sign up is kind of frustrating. So you would send out an email announcement to your entire unit with like a, an email that's been reviewed by someone else. Preferably have your CDC review it if you are a cadet and if you're a senior member reviewing it with your deputy commander for seniors or CDS or your squadron commander, depending on what position you're in, making sure at least one other set of eyes looks through the form, looks through your email, and then it should be ready to go. When I send emails, I always put my email address in the to line and then specific people on the command team, I put in the CC line and then I BCC everyone else. At the very bottom of the email, like underneath my signature block, I put BCC colon and then the list of everyone that's been included. So that might be like squadron members and like guests if it's applicable or family members like parents of cadets if that's applicable. Those would be included in the BCC section just so that people who are reading through it are like, I don't see anyone else who's on this email except for the command team. That gives them situational awareness of who else is receiving it. So not only should you be talking about it over email, but try to get the word out at your meeting activities. So if you've got an announcement section, some squadrons do it at the beginning of the meeting, some of them do it at the end, some of them do it at both. Regardless of when your meeting does announcements, it should be announced that there's an activity happening. Like if an encampment is coming up, you should announce to the squadron that applications for cadet staff or student applications are open on X date. And when they're open, saying they are open. So when it, you have a social activity, the same concept applies of sharing that information and making sure as many people know that they should sign up. Something that I've also done with activities is like you can get a free QR code generator. Um, it, it's like, it's I think it's like QR codegenerator.com or something. I don't even remember what it is, but there is a website out there where if you put a link in, then you can get a free QR code. There are security risks with randomly scanning QR codes out in the world. Don't just randomly scan QR codes, just cyber security like reminder here. Don't just scan random ones that you don't know. But if you're the one who's generating it, then like should be pretty secure. So take the link for your form, generate a QR code for it, and then you can print it out. And so when people sign in, they're like signing in on the sheet or if they're scanning their cap ID, some squadrons have like a little scanner thing. Regardless of, of how people are signing in, you could have a QR code next to it and saying, hey, scan here to sign up for this activity. They'll be like, oh, okay. And so they use their phone, like sometimes it's a camera app, depending on if you have an Apple device or Android. 
Um, sometimes it's a separate app you have to download, but using that QR code can increase people signing up for your activity. So sharing that information of the who, the what, the where, and the when is good information to share when you're making those announcements. Typically, I like to share at least three reminder emails. Normally it's two, but sometimes I try to do three. And sending out that information again saying, hey, just as a reminder, here's the deadline to sign up, here's when the activity is happening, and the link to sign up. And include like a sp very specific list of information that clarifies any questions that people potentially have. And so then I will look at that sign up form. I share that sign up form with the commander and like anyone who needs to know what the results are, just so that it's not in my private like OneDrive or Google Drive. So if you are making forms for an activity, like I know with Teams, if you go into like a web browser, you open up the apps, you open up forms, you can choose to make one in your team for your unit. So what I do is I always go into my units, forms, like folder, open that and then create a new form or duplicate a previous one and then just change the values so that it aligns with the activity that I am doing. I always share it. I like share the link with whoever needs to know that information so that they're not like, who signed up for this activity? I don't know. Squadron Commander should always know who is participating in other activities outside of squadron meetings. So at least squadron commander, CDC, CDS should be receiving that information. And if there's another senior member, like second senior member for the activity, they should also be included on that so they can look at that. Something else that I do in order to prepare for social events is I create a sign-in sheet. And when people arrive at the activity, I have them sign in. I make sure that they have the proper forms for cadets. So that would be the CAP 60-80 and the CAP one, the CAP form 161, which is the emergency medical information document. And for senior members, they should have the 161 as well. And when they are ready to sign out at the end of the activity, there's column for that as well. And they sign out the time and their initials. And right before the activity itself, I normally send a confirmation email just saying, hey, thank you for signing up. We've confirmed that you are participating. And here's just final reminders for the activity. So let's say you've completed all of those things. You've made all your announcements. You've come up to the date of the activity and you're doing it here and now. Here it is. So when you're at the actual activity, it's good to make sure that you know who is attending by printing out that sign-in sheet and having it available so that you're like, okay, so these are all the people who are here. Here are the people who have not signed in yet. And if you need to start contacting people to just kind of see where they are, at least you have their contact information on that sign-in sheet. I always make sure I have the emergency contact information phone number and the participant phone number as columns on my sign-in sheet. So if something does come up, I see on one place, this person has not signed in or this person hasn't signed out and here's their contact information and here's their emergency contact. So that's something very useful for keeping track of people. If you are not wearing uniforms, it might be a little bit challenging to see who is a CAP member and who is not. Sometimes you don't know everyone in your unit. And like when I was doing the group level activity, I don't know everyone in the group. And a lot of people were wearing masks and it was cold. So people were all bundled up and I was like, I don't know who the cat people are. So having a very specific rally point for your activity can be a very useful thing. Being like, at this specific sign, at this location, this is where we're meeting. Or at this specific lamppost next to this trash can at this location is where we're meeting. You could even have like a guide on or some kind of flag that says this is where cat people are. Just so that people know where you are located. I also make sure that people have my contact information. I'm a senior member, so I make sure that the participants all have my contact information so that if they are like, I have no idea where you are, they can call me or text me asking, where are you? <laughs> I don't know where I am. And I can respond to them and take care of them to make sure that they are grouped together with us when we go in and do our activity. So when you are doing your activity, something you'll need to do at the beginning is make sure you do a safety briefing to make sure everyone is on the same page, like reminding people to drink water, take care of themselves. If they see something, say something, all those sorts of things. And anything relevant to the actual activity that you are doing is good to include as well. 
In addition to that safety briefing, if people need to buy tickets, having them buy tickets as you were getting ready to go in, or if they had to buy tickets online ahead of time, they should have confirmed that when they were signing up, just so that it's a little bit easier getting in. Sometimes you can get a group discount, and that is why I mentioned earlier on to kind of check to see if there is a, a contact number or email address so that if they do have group rates, you might be able to knock off two or three dollars per ticket, which does help the individual members and in kind of incentivizing them. Hey, if we've got 15 people, it's only $12 versus $15 per person, so that's really nice. Why don't you join us, please? It'll be fun. So <laughs> going back on track to the actual activity, when you're conducting it, you have to have two senior members. Two deep leadership is required for any CAP activity. So please make sure that you have a designated second senior member. And if you are a cadet, make sure you've got two senior members, like one um, more primary senior member and then a second senior member that's supporting as well. Let's say it's the end of the activity. Everything ran very smoothly. You're good to go. Parents are supposed to pick up their cadets. And if they are not directly picking up their cadets, then there needs to be confirmation that the parent has given permission for the cadet to be picked up by someone else or to just kind of like be under the, the guidance and supervision of someone who's over the age of 18. So like if, if they are not giving permission for the cadet, like the cadet can't get a hold of the parent, then two senior members have to wait until that cadet is picked up. And that does apply for unit meetings as well. At the end of the meeting, there needs to be two senior members, even if there's just one cadet chilling waiting for their parents to pick them up. So that, that happens sometimes and that's okay. We're willing to wait. We'll do what we need to to take care of our cadets. So after the activity is completed and everyone has gotten home safely, typically I ask for the members to send a text that they have arrived home safely or to send a message over Teams to say that they arrived home safely. Part of that is accountability and that's a common practice, especially for emergency services, because if members go out on a mission and they are tired, <laughs> you wanna make sure they get home safely and they didn't crash somewhere on the way. So just making sure that they are home, they are safe, they're back so that you can sign them out is a good thing to do. Since we've just completed the activity, I normally like to send out just a quick email saying, hey, thank you for participating. And then I put together a feedback survey. Most times people do not fill out the feedback survey and that's okay, they don't have to, but it's very useful feedback to say, okay, so here are like five essential questions that I want to answer. What did they enjoy? What did they not enjoy? What would they like to see done differently? And is there any comments that they would like to share? Those sorts of pieces of information I would find useful if I'm planning another activity in the future. So normally I think I get maybe like a 10% or a 5% response rate with feedback forms, unless I verbally remind them at a meeting to fill it out. But normally it's just useful to have feedback just so that we can further improve the effectiveness of our activities, regardless of if they're social or if they're just normal activity. So that's what I do. That's kind of the process. And then I might send like a debrief email to the commander, just summarizing how the activity went, if they weren't participating in it. And if they were, then just maybe verbally going over it with them for a little bit. But that summarizes the process for setting up social activities. And I know this was <laughs> a lot of information and maybe you weren't familiar with the process before, but hopefully if you are a cadet or if you are a senior member that is interested in doing something social with your unit, that this can serve as a great resource for you to just kind of take that step in the right direction to get on with the planning. So thank you so much for watching. If you do have any ideas or thoughts, questions, anything that you want to share, please feel free to include it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. And that is all folks until next time. Toodles.